I'd be doing it on your tablet or phone. Dad. My phone. Why? I'll I'll invite him when I need you. I stay right there. All right. Let's see here. Do we have a, uh, I think we got everyone here. Is everyone coming in? Well, Pete, do you see everyone? I can't see anyone on my phone. Do we have a whole bunch of people in this, uh, this Michael's live event here where we're going to build, be building with some Lego? Yeah, I see a whole bunch of people. I see a pretty pony on one person's camera. Let's see. Nice. Smiling faces. So uh, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Let's kick it off. What do you say? So, uh, hey, everyone. My name is Chris Steininger. I'm a Lego Master Builder, and I work out of Enfield, Connecticut, which is the headquarters for Lego here in North America. So what we're doing today is we're going to be building sea creatures. So actually, my son here, he's coming in here. He helped me build out this sweet little scene here right in the beginning. We have some coral reefs and he put some shipwrecks down here in the bottom. So I'm going to encourage you guys in just a few minutes to actually start building some super cool sea creatures. So a little introduction of myself here. So I'm actually one of seven Lego Master Model Builders in the world that work out of our headquarters in Enfield. And we're the ones that design, build, and create all the large-scale sculptures like you see all over the world at Legoland Parks, at things like San Diego Comic-Con. And uh, I actually have a background in events. So I travel all over the world building large-scale sculptures uh, like a big Death Star or a massive 20-foot-tall rocket down in Washington, D.C. last year. Uh, that was for the 50th anniversary of the Apollo moon landing. So that was a pretty awesome event. So... I get to play with Lego and travel the world. And in some cases, my son Chase gets to come along too and, and help out as well. So, uh, so Pete, you want to talk a little bit more about yourself? Yeah. So hi, everybody. My name is Pete Donner. I also am a master model builder like Chris. Uh, that's kind of a name we use so everybody understands that we work for Lego and we do creative things to inspire the next generation of master builders. But Chris and I both do some of the similar tasks, but for the most part, my job is more based in design and uh, actually management of design teams. Uh, kind of boring, not super fun for kids, but for the adults who are out there that I usually get involved in big scale projects globally. So flagship store design uh, and big models. Uh, locally, I get to work with Chris in the development of events, as he talked about, that him and his son Chris go to. Uh, sorry, that's not his son's name. His son's name is Chase. Uh, they go out and they build these massive models, but Chris and I really we do different tasks, but we are charged with the same goal, and that's to kind of inspire the next generation of kids through showing you guys how to take Lego beyond the box. So we don't just build with the instructions. We make anything and everything from our brains and a little bit of creativity. Right, Chris? Absolutely. I think you nailed it. It really, uh, you, you put it down there. Absolutely. All right. All uh, right. So let's see, you guys, Chris mentioned that he, we're going to have you guys doing some sea creatures. So hopefully you guys brought with you some of the tools that you're going to need to do that. Tools being Lego brick. So what we're going to invite you guys to do is build the same way that Chris is actually going to be building, which I'll let him get into in a moment. But uh, we're going to ask you guys to take your box of bricks that you have from all the sets you maybe built and taken apart. Or like if you were a kid like me, I never actually built the sets. I just dumped it down and made whatever I wanted. We'll pull that brick together, put it on the table, and then we're going to give you guys a small challenge to build sea creatures with Chris and I. Uh, and then when you're done, I really encourage you guys to share those so Chris, myself, and the other master builders can see it at a hashtag Lego or hashtag make it with Michaels. And then it'll get up on the social media and we can check it out and uh, react to what you guys build. Yeah, I think that's great, Pete. Um, so I think, what do you say? Uh, should we start this off and get rolling with the actual building here? So uh, Let's, uh, what do you guys think the real starting point to an actual Lego creation is? Do you think it's the design side or do you think it's right into building? So do, when you build, do you think you just start building or do you kind of plan it out in your head first? Uh, I'm actually kind of one of those types that kind of start thinking about the build and then actually go into the physical building of it. So uh, I'm going to just take a minute here and kind of think about what I want to build. And uh, I actually, I hate to say it, I had a little bit of a, a little pre-thought went into this. I feel like I have to build a, uh, my, one of my favorite sea, sea creatures, and that's a seahorse. 
So I'm going to go ahead and build that. And I have some general ideas of how I want to go about building. It's going to be a very simple, very basic model. Uh, but there's going to be some key components that I want to build into it. So you guys start thinking about that and, uh, and go ahead, start, start building. Um, one of the key things I want to talk about when you're building is uh, it's actually called, it's a, it's a skill that we use every day when we design and create our models. And it's called interlocking. This is the uh, most basic skill that you can do when building with Lego. And I'm going to show you an example of it right here. It's the overlapping of seams. So see, I have these three bricks that I've just put together. And now, unfortunately, there's nothing really holding them together other than this, the top studs on this yellow brick. And it just kind of falls apart real easily. But there's a key thing that you can do to really strengthen this is by adding on another layer on top. And now you've created an interlocked model with overlapping seams and it's not gonna come apart easily. So this is the basis of any model that you need to build uh, with interlocking. Now, from there, you can really add in your own design and create a really uh, unique model. But that's really a, a basic skill that I'd like uh, you guys to practice throughout this build. So uh, I need you guys, let's, let's start doing it, right? Let's start building away um and uh and have fun guys all right so uh this is pete i'm gonna just throw out there so we're gonna give you guys about i'd say roughly 20 minutes so that's what we're giving you guys to build we're also under the same time constraint and uh chris and i are both going to take a different approach to kind of show you how it works when we're in the shop and we're uh we're building he had a large scale life size human, so I should have called that outline to myself. A lot of what I focused on is stuff that you see at Comic Con locally. So uh, I, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of Thanos from the Marvel Universe, but I was the designer that got to actually sit at a table and design an eight foot uh, model of a human figure. It was awesome. It's probably my favorite thing to design. The way that I tend to go after design is probably a little bit different than Chris. I do a lot of my design digitally. So uh, Chris is gonna build physically with his hands. And if you guys look up, you can see on my screen, I'm using a piece of software called Lego Digital Designer. And this is something that uh, I believe you can still acquire it through the Lego internet. Uh, unfortunately, they're no longer updating it with brick elements, which is a little bit of a bummer because we use this on a daily basis. But the good news is there's a, there's a new software coming in called uh, Studio. I'm much more familiar with this one. So I'm gonna use this one in the class to show you guys some pretty cool advanced techniques. Uh, some of the advantages and the reason I'm gonna use it is it's quiet. I don't have to dig through a box of brick and hear the clattering of little plastic pieces hitting each other. Uh, but I also have <laughs> to every Lego element that existed digitally and it goes together like a breeze, even a complicated build like that I can do digitally. And then I have this as a record forever so I can go back and I can build from it. Uh, so. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a background about how I was going to approach this and why I was going to approach it, and not the way that Chris is, is going to be doing it. Uh, at the end, I'll share my file or the images the same as Chris, and I can even show some maybe uh, building techniques because I can break my model apart digitally and then put it back together much simpler than you could by hand. So with that, we're going to give you guys, I'd say, probably about 18 minutes now, and uh, we want you oh, guys to- Oh, you're cutting into their time. I know. I, I'm cutting into my time. <laughs> I'm still yammering over here. Uh, but. We encourage you guys again to do your sharing at hashtag Lego or hashtag make it with Michaels. Uh, we want to see what you guys are building. We want to share what we're building. And uh, beyond that, go have fun. If you guys have questions, you can ask them to Samantha and she'll get them to us. Otherwise, you're probably just going to hear, you know, funny stories from Chris and I's past or maybe a technique as we're uncovering it through the build process. But with that, have at it, have fun, and do some building. Thanks, Absolutely. Pete. So hi everyone, this is Sam from Lego. I work with Chris and Pete and I'll be taking your questions. So you can find me in the chat, Sam, ask me questions. Uh, so if you have any questions for Chris and Pete about their role, what they do, what it's like to be a, a full-time um, Lego master model builder, about their travels, feel free to send me a message. And while we're all building, Chris and Pete will be happy to answer those questions and tell you some fun stories from their adventures. Uh, so find me in the chat, Sam, ask me. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to actually probably kick it off here with um, one of the questions I get asked all the time, uh, as I am always at events, and it's the, the number one question that I get asked is, how do you become a Lego master builder? And I have to say, it's not the easiest thing to get because there's so few of us. Um, and uh, it really comes down to having a creative background. We look for people who are artists. Um, Pete is a fine example of that, uh, having an art background. 
I actually have a background in woodworking, furniture making and carpentry. Uh, so I built furniture um, as well as I built a boat. So it's, um, it's still a creative background, just not a traditional art background uh, like Pete has. Uh, but generally speaking, if you were to get a job in the model shop where we work, you would start off as a model gluer trainee um, and that's someone who's just learning the basics. And uh, was I muted that whole time? Not the whole time, just the last. Just for seconds. a second. <laughs> oh, all right. Someone muted me. Oh man. Whew. So now I'm unmuted. I don't know how much you guys all got, but uh, you basically uh, start off in the model shop as a model gluer trainee. And I hate, yeah, it's kind of sad that we say that, but we have to glue our models because they travel all over the world. Um, now, you'll actually rise to the ranks, eventually becoming a master model builder or a actual Lego model designer. And that can take years. It's something that it's a lot of on the job training because of the fact uh, it's, it's such a unique job. It's, it's a type of job where you can't, I can't say, all right, go to this uh, college or university and they're going to have everything you need to know to become a Lego master builder. Uh, a lot of it is on the job training. Uh, Pete, would you agree? I have it. Uh, yeah, I would. I, uh, one thing that I think Chris is doing a really good job of emphasizing or illustrating is our team is extremely diverse. We have one guy who was a baker, a firefighter, a forest firefighter to be more specific, <laughs> That's right. and uh, an artist. And we kind of all come together. We're the bad news bears of sorts because we all come from these really different backgrounds. But when we come together, we win the game. Uh, we do a lot of crazy, crazy things that I'm really feeling lucky to have had the opportunity to do. But I would say the, the modernization of how we design using the computer has changed things slightly. So there's a little bit more of a detailed path of how you can get in. Uh, we use all the same software and technologies that you would see at Pixar or a studio that does the movies that we all love. And uh, as a father of uh, two little girls, they love them as well. So we get to kind of dabble in that same world, which being an artist and being kind of a big technology fan. I really love that aspect of our jobs. So uh, one thing that I tell people when I'm asked, how, do, how could I get your job? I tell them the, the same thing I would have told them before. You got to really study hard. You got to know all your basics of mathematics and, and, yeah, and all that and stuff. But ultimately it comes down to the art skills and uh, having a good eye. So drawing a lot, building a lot. We kind of uh, have a good time with one of our builders because he said that, or one of our master model builders said that. <laughs> Draw a lot, build a lot. As, as much as we're having fun with them, it really is the formula to success within our team. Uh, it's, it's, it's all about what you see and how you can translate that out of brick. Yeah. I, I, hey, guys. I appreciate yeah. Hey, Chris. Sorry, let me just jump in for, um, we have a couple questions from people who have just joined. So can you just reiterate for our participants exactly what we'd like them to build, what you're building, some suggestions um, for some sea creatures that they can build oh, along yeah. with you? Absolutely. So uh, here, let me show you what I have started here. So uh, I have just the basics here. We're building a very simple it's going to be a seahorse. It's going to be a seahorse. So we're asking the participants here to build a, a sea creature. Anything. Could be, it could be a whale. could be a shark. Uh, it could be a sea cucumber. I mean, those guys are kind of simple, but I think that'd be pretty cool to build. What do you think, Chase? Well, a sea, sea cucumber? cucumber? You think you should build a sea cucumber? I want to see a sea cucumber out there. Yeah, no because one's got to build one fish go in their butts. No, come on. you got to stop watching that show. <laughs> so... What's this here, Chase? Uh, coral. Coral. You're building Start another coral. coral. So we have some coral here in front. So this is obviously a sea creature that might live in the coral. There we go. So, uh, yeah, so we're looking for any type of sea creature. And uh, could you guys uh, share again where we're located in the U.S. and where some of our other offices are uh, located around the world if someone was interested in working with us? Oh, yeah. So uh, we're actually located in Enfield, Connecticut, is the North American headquarters for LEGO. Now, globally, LEGO is located out of De uh, Denmark, which is the, the motherland for LEGO. So it was created back in Billund, Denmark in 1932. So that's where LEGO is from. But we have headquarters and locations all over the world. 
Awesome. Thanks, Chris. And the people want to know what is the coolest thing that you guys have each ever built as Lego master model builders? Oh man. Pete, yeah. you want to go first? Uh, sure. I got to be honest with whoever asked that question. I think it's an evolving answer. I think that every day we get asked to do something else that's different and, uh, more challenging. Uh, when I first started, everything was original concept, meaning somebody within our team would draw it up and then we would make it. So it was a little bit more flexible. And in the last 10 years or so, we do a lot of IP work, which is recreating characters that are famous and popular throughout the world. So everybody knows who they are. So those are always a challenge. Uh, for me personally, I did one maybe about eight years ago. Lego no longer carries the line, but I was able to design the complete set of the Ninja Turtles. And it was a real challenge because I had to do all four of them at one time in one model and it had to basically utilize the same budget which is not fun lego talk but everything that we do takes time time you unfortunately have the cost aspect to it so that was a real challenge to try to make them all work as one thing and if anyone's interested if you go on the internet i'm sure you can find photos of it but that's probably the most challenging one i did how about you chris yeah i i pete that was an awesome model and, and pete kind of underplays it a little bit it was a super cool model uh and, and kind of paint you a little picture here. It was basically all four turtles stacked on top of each other like a totem pole. And uh, Pete really uh, knocked it out of the park. Park. It was it was by far one of the coolest models that we've uh, ever been able to do. Um, so if I had a favorite, I think we actually have pictures on this. Um, so we did a big project down in Sydney, Australia, which was uh, done for the Wildlife World and Aquarium. And one of the key models that we built there um, was a massive 21 foot long shark. great white shark. Yeah, it was huge, 21 feet long. So let me think here, that's bigger than your car at home. Uh, it's probably the size of a average truck, like a, a extended cab truck, I'd say. And uh, it, had, uh, it had a rough trip down to Australia. So we built it at Enfield here. And then we shipped it on a boat. We put it in a special container uh, and shipped it on a boat all the way down to Sydney, where I flew down and met up with it uh, weeks later. And when it arrived, uh, when I opened up the container to take it out, the model had broken in half. So it was a, it was a rough start for that project. So. Uh, ended up having to be uh, calling in some reinforcements. Uh, my father, who was a mass model builder at the time, so I'm actually a second generation mass model builder, he was able to uh, hop on a plane and fly down as well because uh, we needed to do some serious repairs to that model. But uh, Sam, do we have, uh, or I think we have some pictures of that model, right? I do, yes. Um, so let me see if I can share my screen. Um, but just for anyone who's joining us, uh, you can find me in the chat. Sam asked me if you have any questions for Chris and Pete, and we are building sea creatures right now. So you can feel free to build any sea creature you'd like from your bucket of Lego bricks that you have with you. And then shortly, Chris and Pete will be sharing what they designed and giving some tips and tricks uh, about how you can use your Lego collection. Um, but let me see if I can go ahead and show you this great shark that we made. Uh, and as Sam's bringing that up, I think a fun fact that uh, I think, Chris, you must know this, but when we initially uh, conceived that model, we came up with 21 feet because we based it on the legendary largest shark that was ever found in the Long Island Sound, which is a waterway in Connecticut. Uh, yeah, yeah. Near, near our location. And uh, apparently somebody was fishing and they caught a 21 foot shark, which is what our project manager told us. That seems like a <laughs> Sharp. I don't know about that guy. He never, he's never. I mean, <laughs> all he ever wants to tell us is to stop adding cool details to our models. It's let's face it. He's a fisherman, and they always tell fish stories about the biggest catch. And so you gotta, you always got to fact check those fishermen. Chris, how is your model coming out over there? Let's see what you got. So uh, my model's moving along here. So I have, um, I have the start. So kind of a cool thing about the. Uh, the seahorses it has these little fins that actually use to move itself around and some of the seahorses have these spikes that are coming out the back and everything that kind of make it look uh, evil and less tasty i believe I, i'm assuming it's maybe defense mechanism so i kind of uh, represent those here with some of the roof bricks and then i gave um, <laughs> what's that it makes it look evil that's a it's, it's, i mean come on i wouldn't want to eat that thing 
No, their defense technique is hiding in coral. Oh, Chase says its uh, defense technique is actually the hiding coral. So that's uh, its color. That's his color. So maybe we don't have the right color here. The right coral here. Maybe you need to build something. I told you we needed orange. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, that's where I am now. I got to make the head yet, uh, but it's moving right along. Cool. Looks good, man. Awesome. So um, thanks for the update, guys. Can you maybe speak to the difference between what uh, we do in the model shop versus set designers, the boxes that people would buy from Lego at home? Uh, so we, uh, we in the model shop, we tend to be, as I mentioned before, we're more of a beyond the box thing. So in PMD is what we call it. It's products, marketing, and development, I believe is the formal name. And that team, they develop all the retail sets, which is an amazing process that would take two hours to describe. So just quickly, it's about a team of on average 30 people, two years, all different disciplines from architects through to the brick team that develops new elements. And they go through and develop the sets that you buy. So the building instructions are heavily vetted and they make sure that they're gonna work and you guys are gonna have to do strength and everything is accounted for. And our team, we're asked to showcase what you can do with the brick as a, as a medium of art. So we take the brick, we dissect the sets, we break it down and we make human beings, we make cars, we make cats, dogs, anything you can think of we build without building instructions. So we're kind of here to showcase that it's an awesome way to learn how to use the Lego and we very much appreciate the sets and what we do. It's my opinion, every time you buy a set, you get a small set of instructions that teach you how to use Lego in the most correct way. What we are, we're here to do is kind of encourage you to take that new knowledge and those parts and make anything you want. That's our marching orders. And create the next generation. Yeah, I think uh, Pete nailed it. I, I, I just see as really as we're the inspiration. We're the ones that are, uh, that are uh, to put super cool content out there large models to really just inspire you guys uh, to go nuts and with your own Lego collection uh, beyond the actual set. So, uh, you know, like Pete said, you can build that set. It's going to give you the basis of the skills that you need. Um, and it's going to teach you how to build with Lego. But once you've learned those skills, uh, you know, it's our creations, our large scale sculptors that will hopefully, hopefully inspire you that you now you you can get out of that small model and build something that's absolutely massive, uh, including uh, with your bricks that you guys all have at home too. Yeah, great. 20 minutes, because I feel like I've been, I was a bit ambitious when I said 20 minutes, because I don't think I'm going to finish my model. <laughs> you don't think you're yeah. going to finish your model, Pete? Come on. <laughs> I'm going to do everything within my power, but I might have gotten a little carried away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're coming up on time, but... Um... Thanks for sharing about the models. And just so everyone knows, uh, we do a lot of content on LEGO social channels. You can follow us at LEGO on Instagram and Facebook and at LEGO group on Twitter. Um, and we post lots of time-lapse of videos of these guys at events. You can see the huge models they make um, and check out some of their work if you're interested. Um, but yeah, for anyone joining, we're building sea creatures right now. You can build any kind of sea creature you'd like with your Lego collection. And then Chris and Pete are going to show us their models in a minute and give us um, some tips and trip tricks, excuse me, from the experts. Um, one of the good questions that we have uh, as we finish up our builds here is how do you organize your Lego bricks? Uh, I know from personal experience, you guys have an amazing library of bricks at work. So can you tell the people a little bit about that? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So uh, Pete, I'll take this one, I guess. Um, so the way we organize our bricks and it's not fair really because uh, at home, you don't have access to the bricks that we get them from our factories. Uh, so when we get our brick, this is kind of really where it starts for us. When we get a brick from our factories, it comes already sorted out. So if I go into our warehouse, I can find a box that's all just one by four orange brick. And, or I could find a box that's two by four orange brick. Now, uh, that makes it a lot easier for us because when at our desk, at our, our, our workspaces, we have trays that are all... They kind of, I should have an example here, something are kind of like here. They're kind of like this uh, toolbox here or this parts box. Uh, they're all s divided out trays. Now, it does not, it's not exactly like this one. It's much bigger and has a whole bunch more spaces. But what it allows us to have is that it allows us to have everything 
from a one by one in one color all the way through a one by 10 in that color, and then also a two by two all the way through a two by 10 in that same color. And uh, when we're building these large, large scale sculptures, we largely build with just basic pieces. We're not using so many uh, elements like you see here, maybe like uh, um, a bow and arrow uh, that you guys may be playing with every single day. Uh, we're using stuff just like this, these very simple, very basic shapes, the basic uh, assortment of Lego brick. Now we do add on other features uh, like in areas where maybe you're building an eye, you might want to use specialty elements to really create that uh, lifelike fe uh, realistic features. But that we have a whole nother area with brick that uh, in specialty elements, we call the designer stock area. And we'll take and go over there and build in that area when we're working on a specialty uh, section of the model. But generally speaking, when we're building these big sculptures, we're working at our desk or at a, a workstation where we have a lot of the basic elements. Yep, and uh, yeah, the specialty elements, as Chris was saying, we do do some small design that's similar to PMD. So if anyone's ever gone to a retail store and they built a small set with instructions and then taken that home, that's probably come through our team. So that, that area is set up much more like it is in PMD where all of the specialty elements, non-standard bricks, we call them. Something that's not just a square, if it has studs on the side, if it's a slope brick, if it's got an arc top, if it's a, craw, a bone arrow, as Chris just shared, those will keep in that area, which is super nice to build with. I mean, when I was a kid, you guys can probably all feel this same struggle now. You always wanted one more one by two plate. You couldn't find it because you lost it. <laughs> and uh, now we just go into the back. And as Chris said, we have boxes of them, like thousands of them in there. So we're really blessed with our setup that we have. Yeah, that's really not fair. I'm really, uh, I don't know about you, Pete, but working from home, it's given me a whole new appreciation for how the normal people build with Lego. I agree with Chris. He's not a normal person. <laughs> no, not at all. Not <laughs> at all. We are, uh, are definitely, as Pete said, blessed to be able to have uh, a, you know, awesome uh, model shop where we have all the elements that we could ever uh, imagine. Uh, and the big thing is that they're sorted out for us. Great, thanks guys. So yeah, we're gonna be um, wrapping up in just a, two more minutes here. Um, and but we'll be that. sure, well, we need to finish up because um, we're gonna be sharing our models. If you're just joining, we're building sea creatures right now and you can find me, Sam, ask me in the chat if you have any questions for Chris and Pete. Um, but as we finish up our models, just one last thing I thought we should share, Chris. Um, talking about the elements, uh, Lego elements, can you share with everyone some tips on how we name Lego bricks? So the difference between studs and tubes and what a two by four looks like, a one by two. Uh, yeah. So uh, there's really some key differences between uh, different Lego elements. So when we talked about them in the mosh we we just call them either uh, Lego bricks, which are going to be these guys right here. Or we talk about maybe Lego uh, plates, which are the, I don't know, I'm going to kind of get in there, which are the thin ones. So I don't know if everyone knows this or not, but uh, an actual uh, plate right here is equal to three, or, I'm sorry, three plates are equal to one height of a brick. Um, and there's all sorts of different elements. There's, there's thousands of different uh, elements within the Lego assortment. And, all the way down to things like cheese wedges, and it might be hard to see here, but it kind of kind of looks like a little piece of cheese. There's also things called headlight bricks. Um, I don't think I have any in front of me. I don't know, Pete, if you have one in front of you. Uh, I can show it when I go into LDD. But the, uh, oh, cool. We call it a headlight brick because it's what the fans have named it, and we have a close collaboration with the fan community, but it's actually called an curling brick. And a little bit about that brick, it was the first brick that broke the system, meaning that you built off of the side of the brick as opposed to the top. And if you're a fan, you love that. But if you're a, a part developer over in Dillon for a long time, they despised that brick because it made it much more challenging to make stable models. But as uh -huh. I'm thankful that we have those bricks. Yeah, and I think that a real fun fact for everyone is uh, the Basically, the bumps on top of a Lego brick are called Lego studs. They do have a name. Uh, and then underneath a, a Lego brick, you'll see that there's tubes. And then the studs and tubes connect. And that's what gives you what we call clutch power, holding the bricks together. 
So someone was asking about that in the chat. So it's studs, right. tubes, clutch power. Those are our fun vocab words for today. And, and uh, the group, they refer to studs as knobs. So where? Um, in PMD, they're referred to as knobs. Well, yes. we don't have to confuse the point, Pete, you know? <laughs> we should talk about this offline. <laughs> yeah, so we can talk about this later. Um, but we're uh, halfway through our class right now, so I think it's time to share our models. Are we ready, uh, Chris and Pete? Chris, you should go first. <laughs> I should go first? Yes. Come on. You gotta... oh, Chris, man. tap dance real quick for a second. All right, I'm going to tap dance. Pete might not be ready, but we're going to go for it here. All right, here he is. There he is. It's my seahorse. Nah. I don't, they really don't make that noise, do they? So there is my so. seahorse. I, I kind of noticed in some of the um, pictures I look up for reference that uh, they have like this little crown actually, which I thought was quite interesting. So I kind of tried to uh, pull in that crown. Um, I used some hinge elements here to kind of get the, the neck articulated down because they always tend to be like floating along kind of like in this uh, kind of it's a weird they're not they don't really swim upright they kind of swim at a weird angle uh, so it always kind of look like they're looking down so there is my seahorse oh, and what kind of uh, cool techniques did you use Chris that um, I use, the part our fans could yeah, use I use a little bit of sideways building but because we are so limited on time here I didn't go too too crazy uh, but you can see some of those sideways building bricks like Pete was talking about uh, that allow you to actually start building out and sideways. So I actually uh, then attached on some other hinge elements here, which allowed me to, to actually uh, articulate these rear fins to make it look like he's swimming along. Whoa, knocking over some coral here. What about you, Pete? My turn. Uh, Hey, are you still, do you need me to tap dance for you some more? No, I'm good. I'm good. I, All right. Let me share my screen. I did mine digitally again, remember? So can you guys see that, Chris? Yep. Oh, come on. You, you way outdid me. What's going on here? <laughs> this is why you use the software. You have every brick you need. So oh, I went man. with a, uh, it's, it's a baby octopus. Not, not quite done. Not quite there yet. But I used a few pretty cool techniques that I try to use in the models that we build in the shop. Uh, we tend to build models about 98% studs up, but when you're doing a face and you gotta do an eye or you have to do a detail like a mouth or say somebody has a specific watch if you're doing a certain character. So uh, some of the techniques that I leveraged to get this guy done, I did some sideways building, which I can uh, share with you here. Uh, I got that. So these actually stud on sideways. So for those people who don't know what sideways building is, this is standard up studs. So these are studs, these are just bricks stacked. But if you want to add more detail, you can go sideways. Uh, Chris was given some of the dimensional relationships within Lego. There's something called the two to five rule, which is what I use to space this to get it pretty much central to where I want it. So actually, it's more like a Nautilus as I'm spinning it around. Uh, but then some other techniques that I use aside from sideways building is I put some hinges on here so I could articulate the arms. Big word for pose to make it look a little bit more interesting than if it was all just 90 degree angles. I'm actually like doing this airplane. You can't see me because I'm sharing the screen. So that was lucky for me. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, it's, it's not a fancy or fun technique, but really the core of all the models we make are based, as Chris demonstrated at the beginning, and interlocked, studs up, traditional built models. It's really about mixing in other techniques to add the detail where you need it, as opposed to trying to make a model that's all technique and no strength. So this is my model. Now I definitely... Uh, We'd love to see what you guys have going on out there. So if you guys are working on stuff, we'll go into gallery mode and Chris and I will take a gander at what you guys are sharing on screen. Uh, stop sharing the screen so I can do that. Let me know if you see anything cool that I should, I should uh, be jumping in on. And oh, Pete, I just man. wanted to, sorry, Chris, one sec. I just want you to note, because uh, we had some questions. The software that Pete was using is called Lego Digital Designer. Um, so it's a design software that we use. Uh, unfortunately, it's no longer available for fans to download. It's something that we're just using um, internally. But that's something that we'll use to design something digitally before making it physically, just so you know. 
Uh, and not to correct Sam, because it's not really a correction, I just don't know if she's aware, but there is a, an alternate option called Brick Link Studios, which is uh, the next incarnation, I think, at some point of, of uh, LDD, or Lego Digital Designer. Thanks, Pete. Aiden, I see your, your creation is looking pretty awesome. I think, uh, I think you got some, uh, looks like a whole underwater scene you have going there, bud. I like it. Oh, oh is, that a, is that a, uh, a stingray? That kind of looked like a stingray to me. Let me see here. I'm flipping through. Oh, I think I just saw a shark. Oh, it was a shark. Gabby, that is cool. Is that a blowfish? I think Gabby's got a blowfish. You seeing that, Chris? Uh, I, I haven't seen I'm swiping through here. There's so many to swipe through. It's amazing. It's you guys have done some awesome creations, I have to say. Oh, it looks like another seahorse I found uh, in here. It looks like... Uh, let me see here. These are some awesome creations. Oh, I see a starfish. Don has a starfish there. That's awesome. I see what looks like uh, it's a uh, Layla and Nora. I think it's a turtle. And is that a shark? It looks like it might be. Whoa! I just heard somebody just take a dive. So somebody. Yeah, that was that was Chase's coral here. It didn't survive the whole show here, unfortunately. Yeah, because of your arm. Oh, is that Emma? Emma, is that a? Uh, it looks kind of like a, not a squid, is it? Or is it jellyfish. jellyfish? I think uh, yeah, she's shaking her head. Yes, that is a jellyfish. I love it. Titus, that is awesome. That, is that a Norwal? Do I see a Norwal from Titus? Shake your head, Titus. If that's a Norwal, there's two of you in the shot. No, it's not a Norwal. Is that a? Is that a swordfish? Is that a? Is that a Jeep Cherokee? No, not a jeep. Oh, he shook his head. Yes. Yes, a jeep. Oh, very no, good. No, it's a swordfish. Swordfish. All right. Oh, I definitely, Zach had a stingray there. I saw that, Zach. You, it's bouncing around on me, so I lost you here. But I saw that. That was a sweet looking stingray. Make a Let's see here. I'm liking it when I see it. an anglerfish? I think Thomas S. has an anglerfish going on. Thomas? Yeah. Good stuff. I like the way you got the little light, just drawing them in. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, Shelby, looks like he's got uh, coral going there. Is that what's, what's going on there? I think another form of coral. I like you shaking his head. Yeah, that's what it is. That's awesome. Is that one? Emily with a turtle. Sebastian's got a whole undersea life. One of them looks like a bunny rabbit. That must be a scuba diving bunny. <laughs> I like that. I see lots of huge piles of Lego. There's some kids that have some amazing collections of Lego on here. I I have to agree here. They're, they're going to put us to shame, Pete. I mean, we have quite a bit of Lego at our houses, too, but I think some of these kids have us beat. I see Joshua Alvarez. I see that there's a parental unit that's building almost as furiously as he is, which I like. <laughs> I like that. Oh, man. This is great. I love it. Oh, look at this. There's some sort of crab. Looks like a sweet crab here by Frank. Looks like Minecraft. I like it. Yep, he's shaking his head. Yep, that's a crab. That is sweet. I see uh, Sarah's iPhone, an angry face, and then a ship come in. I see you. Yeah, you're smiling. You know I'm talking to you. <laughs> Oh, oh DJ Frank, that's an, is that the crab? Is that what Chris was talking about? Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's nice. If you see, Pete, how about Maria's iPad uh, has a sweet turtle. Oh, turtle? That is an oh, awesome turtle. turtle. I love it. Made out of Duplo. That's cool. Yeah. That was a Duplo turtle. Chase Point Chase uh, picked up that Maria uh, had the Duplo turtle there. I think I see some more turtles, uh, not turtles, uh, crab. That's also Duplo looking around. Uh, man, some awesome creations. I'm screen capturing her in all of these so I can use it as a learning annex. <laughs> a way to bolster my own skills. I am heavily impressed by you guys. This is awesome. 
So Chris and Pete, um, do we want to maybe share some uh, building tips and tricks uh, with everybody? Some snot building, interlocking, how do we, a big question we've had is how do you make something round? What, uh, what tricks can we give everyone? Sam, number one, let's, let's use proper language. Snot building, come on. It's, it's <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to be inappropriate. Uh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Sam, Makes a valid point, snot building. It means studs not on top. Pete, did you uh, you want to talk about some uh, cool building techniques? Yep, I'm just saving my file really quick. Yeah, yeah. And then I will show Yeah, you why do you not think it over? Uh, so I think I'll try and tackle the one that it's actually one of the first steps in becoming a designer in our team. We'll actually have you sit at a table with a piece of uh, paper that we've developed internally called brick paper, which has been shared already, I believe, in the chat at the beginning of this. But we're also going to give you a lesson in how to use that specifically in a moment. But I'm going to show you how I tackle the idea of making a round. Uh, so there's a few different ways you can do it. You can just stack stuff and make it round. But if you really want to get a round shape from a square element, you have to maximize the resolution. So a real quick anatomy of Lego. Uh, Chris mentioned it already. I'm going to reiterate it visually. So a brick is three plates, which this is a plate. This equals a brick. And to prove it, I'll put a brick next to it. Really? Yeah. And uh, basically what I'm trying to tell you is if you want to make something round, you want to try to use as much resolution, so as much uh, jump in size as possible. So if I was going to do it, I should just open the file, but I feel like I'm so confident that I can do it quickly that I can do it quickly. I would use this, which is called a bow element, which is a specialty element. And Chris, hopefully I'm tap dancing, so you can come up with a tip next. Oh, I got to come up with a tip next? I thought you were giving all the tips. Oh, <laughs> man, you got to give all my tips out. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. This is the one Chris told me earlier he wanted to give. That's why I'm giving this one. Uh, so essentially, you can make a circle using these bow elements. Uh, I never really tried to do this with people watching. It's so hard. So this is how I would make a small object round. But again, when I was talking before, we tend to build our models just using basic brick. But if they have something in their hand, let's say they have a flashlight, this is a good way to get the cylinder part of the flashlight uh, from a model. And the way I did this, I'm never going to be able to explain this quickly, so I'm going to try and do it as, as quickly as possible. Uh, there's a 5 to 2 ratio within LEGO, which is a really big way of saying, but this here is the same width as two studs. So if I was to put a brick here and here, which this software is not going to let me do, this is the same width as that. So I could slide this into that space and it will stud back into the system, which uh, maybe I'll have Chris explain something to you. And while he's doing that, I will mock that up and show it to you again. How does that work for you, Chris? Yeah, I mean, I was, uh, was going to go right back to interlocking for all the people that did not show, uh, see this. Uh, when they first came in, because I don't have a lot of bricks in front of me here, like you have. Um, so uh, one of the key things uh, for skill-wise um, that we do when we build, uh, I talked about earlier, so it may be a refresher for you, but um, it's interlocking. It's the overlapping of seams. Now, Chase actually kind of put, whoa, built it a little bit bigger here. So what you guys can see here is this middle layer, this middle layer right here, is completely interlocked with the upper and lower layers. They're overlapping all the seams. So that's kind of the key things um, that would help make a strong model. So let's say you want to build um, a bridge. Let's say you want to build a bridge, something nice and long. If you were to take and build your bridge without interlocking, your bridge would have a whole bunch of seams lining up, just like this one that I just quickly built here. And what would happen is if you were to try to walk a minifigure across it or something like that, you might put a little pressure right in the middle and all of a sudden this bridge would just fall right apart. Now, when you use interlocking, you overlap those seams and make a nice, strong, stable model. And now if you wanna walk your minifigure across or maybe drive a car across or something like that, this is nice and stable. It took a lot of force to break that apart. I guess I shouldn't have broken, broken it that hard. But it does. Trust me, it's a lot stronger than a typical uh, model that you would stack up. I don't know if you're ready, Pete. 
I am. I'm just looking for one more piece. So uh, I think I have something that might be slightly more approachable. So I'm going to do this because the other one is a bit complicated and I have a tendency to be wordy. The people that uh, say, who don't know Sam, she's the one who's asking us questions. She could back me up on that. I have a tendency to. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Uh, so instead, I want to show you, so we talked about snot building a whole bunch, and uh, there's actually three different ways to achieve that. So the most basic way is to use this brick here, which is called a one by one with stud on side. And this is a demonstration of both snot building and what I was saying before about two studs is actually the same as five plates in height. So I can take this brick or this plate here and I can put it on and you'll see that it's perfectly smooth. And you can see as I step this edge, you get a nice slow arc. So if you had a big enough circle you're trying to create, you can use this technique, which I'll continue to go through, to get a nice smooth form to a rounded object using the brick. Uh, so the second way to achieve this, and we talked about it before, this is actually the headlight brick, as Chris referred to it. It's really called the Erling brick. If we were to order it, we have to call it the Erling brick. I don't know where that came from. I think it's from Denmark. Uh, this brick is actually dimensionally different. So the size of this brick is different than the size of this brick. If I put this on, you see it overhangs by, I believe it's one fifth the width of a plate or a brick rather. But what that allows us to do is it changes, again, the dimension. So you have more of a gradual arc than if you just did two of these. So if you're trying to build a circle, you can just then repeat with a regular standard brick and then you can go back. But I mentioned that there's a third way to, to add stud, stud, studs not on top or snot brick building. That's, this is a, it's a one by two with plate and this gives you the same one fifth offset. So this and this are actually in grid with each other. If I put this here, you'll see that I could stud across this to that. And uh, those are the three different ways, but as a, for the younger builders out there, it can be frustrating because these and these look so similar that you can sometimes confuse why you can't stud across them but it's because they both serve different purposes. This is to create a recess for a headlight, and this is to create a smooth surface to build off on a wall. And uh, I know that's probably a mouthful, but uh, <laughs> you guys, an introduction to some of the ways you can snot build and add strength to your models when you're also adding detail. All right. Thanks, so, so um, sorry, Chris. This is- Yeah, it um, looks like we're approaching the uh, you know, the 10 minute mark here. So uh, go ahead, Sam, sorry. No problem, yeah, I was just gonna say we're um, coming to the end of our hour. So uh, I'm Sam, uh, uh, you can find me in the chat. Sam asked me if we have any final questions for Chris and Pete, our Lego Master Model Builders. Um, but just a reminder to everyone, we'd love to see everything that you're building. You can share on social media with hashtag Lego and hashtag make it with Michaels. Uh, also make sure to visit michaels.com slash classes tomorrow and you can see the recording of today's session if you want to watch it back and uh, rehear any of the tips from today uh, and you can oh so you can see that moment again <laughs> and you can also sign up for more classes at michaels.com slash kids club online for any of michael's other great classes coming up um, but yeah since we're at the end of the class now um do we want to talk a little brick paper and um, how people can oh. use that now after the class? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can jump into that. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that we use brick paper and I put together a quick primer to kind of explain to you how we would use it. And I encourage you guys to build stuff with it and take your builds to the next level. Again, as Chris was saying, he likes to do some research and get some idea of what he's going to do first. We'll start with brick paper and it can be as simple as the alphabet that I'm going to explain here all the way up to if we're doing a human face and the likeness of somebody that anyone would recognize like a famous actor. We start with brick paper and a pencil. So the way brick paper works is there's three uh, smaller rectangles. You add those together and it gives you a brick, but that allows you to quickly draw in the details. So using the ABC and a standard studs up. So again, the studs are on the top of the letters. We can take and add pencil lines, oops, that's not the right one. We can add pencil lines to our drawing. And then when we turn the letters off, this is now that hey, same Pete? A. Yep. Sorry, are you, you, do you intend to share your screen? Oh, I thought I was sharing my screen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I wondered why I could still see myself. There you go, now we can see the ABC. Sorry about that, guys. So uh, what I did here is I took the grid and I projected it over. Uh, a set of letters and you can see again you have each the lines going up and down separate bricks the lines going uh, horizontally up and down going across and down those separate the bricks into place 
And then you can basically just take a pencil and trace it, make judgment calls. So when I did this A, I didn't know if I liked it better here or here. The font itself actually is asymmetrical based on how I placed it on the grid. So when I built the actual A, B, and C, I like the symmetry, so I changed it to here. So the reason I mentioned that is brick paper is really your starting point. You put whatever you're trying to do. If you're trying to do a cartoon character you love, you draw his face on here, you try to trace over that to get the brick shape of it. And then after you put the bricks together, don't be shy about changing it. Like this is only the beginning of the design process, even for us in the shop. When we're doing a human face, which is where this gets used the most, we'll continuously take the eye apart and rebuild it even if the brick paper dimensionally lines up perfectly to the eye in the photo we have. Uh, last tip I wanna leave you guys with on brick paper uh, before I really encourage you guys to go out is the B here I did with the studs going across the top and I felt like the shape of the B would be better shown if I did it out of plate with the studs on the side. So I took that same B and I flipped it onto its back. I slid it down and I relined it up to the grid. And when I turn the B off here, you'll see that this B has a lot more detail on this edge as opposed to this one. So this more tells the story or visually aligns to the font I'm trying to recreate. So the point of me explaining this to you is not to confuse you, which hopefully I haven't done, is to show you that don't feel like you can only do it one way. When you're designing or you're being creative or you're trying to bring something to a higher level of detail, experiment, spin it, try it a bunch of different ways. That would be my advice to you. But take the brick paper and go create anything you want. Um, you can actually make three-dimensional things. I know it's very 2D here, but you can make circles and balls and all of those things. But for level A use of this, for the first run at brick paper, try doing something simple. Take a 2D drawing of a cartoon character and recreate it out of brick using brick paper. Yeah, I, I think you brought up something really important there, Pete, and that is try it a whole bunch of different ways. So uh, when we're designing uh, back at the shop, uh, we may take a model and build it three or four different ways before we come up with a final design. We're not gonna just settle for the first one. We're most likely gonna have multiple different iterations along the way till we finally land on the final design. So when you're building, every time you rebuild that model because uh, maybe it fell apart when you were uh, assembling it, Take those as moments to, to redesign, maybe make it stronger, make changes, maybe that you didn't necessarily think about the first time around. So, uh, and that's the best part about Lego is that it is endless. You can continually build and rebuild your models. Now. Thanks, thanks Chris. We're at the, we're uh, at our final moments. And so we'll, we'll finish it off with a bang. We had a few last minute questions about Lego Masters. So everybody wants to know, do you guys <laughs> know Jamie and Amy, the most famous Lego builders in the world? And uh, what's the difference between you guys and Jamie and Amy? Yeah, uh, we, we do know them. We do, do know them. Uh, we've been in contact with them before. Uh, we were actually gonna have them on our show, uh, Masters on Masters, which which uh, was about the, the Lego Masters show. Um, but Pete, do you wanna talk about the main differences between us? Yep, uh, so Jamie was a, he's actually from the United States. He's from the Northeast where we uh, reside. So we knew him before he was even working for the Lego company as a Lego fan. Like I said, we're very close to the community, uh, the Lego fan community. Uh, the difference between his job today versus say my job or Chris's job is again, he actually spearheads or runs a large collection of designers who do product development uh, and he himself has developed a lot of models that had just really been huge successes within the Lego fan community as well as kids around the world and more recently he runs and trains and teaches the next level of people how to design sets for retail uh, so Chris and I again we're here as inspiration we're here to show people what you can do with the brick beyond just making uh, the sets not, not just making but taking it beyond the sets so that you can get the most value, as Chris said before, Lego is anything you want it to be. You're not locked into an action figure or a board game. You're, you can create anything that your mind can, can tell your hands how to put together. Uh, but yeah, so we do know them both. We actually just had a conversation with Jamie about two weeks ago. He came to a department meeting within our team. And he actually told us some of the story of how fun it was to work on the show. So we do know yeah. him. Uh, we, uh, yeah, so we do know both of them. And they both work for PMD, so they're both set developers. I believe Amy was responsible for the development of the Friends mini doll. So if there's any fans of the Friends line yeah. out there, I think she was the person who developed that. 
which is, in my opinion, that's, that's probably one of the coolest things about Lego is you can be a model designer who then influences something as iconic as a minifigure, which even the mini dog yeah, is relatively new in comparison is still this visually iconic, recognizable Lego icon. So that's a Great. difference. Great. Thanks, guys. So, yes, we're at the end of the class. So, again, this is Sam from Lego. Just um, some final notes from us. A couple people have asked uh, at the beginning, uh, or a little while ago, we were talking about the software that Pete was using. Um, and that software you can find online is BrickLink Studios, a similar software, rather, if you'd like to find that. Um, we'll also be sharing the brick paper with everyone that you can use that Pete was just discussing. Um, and again, please look online tomorrow, michaels.com slash classes. You can watch this class recorded back again. Um, and we'd also love to see everything that you built and designed using hashtag Lego and hashtag make it with Michaels on any of uh, your social apps. Yeah. All right, Chris and Pete, anything you'd like to say before we say goodbye? Any last minute notes? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's been absolutely fun i've had a great time oh chase he's still building away over here i hope you guys all are building away as well um but yeah it, as i sam nailed it uh pete nailed it in the beginner but make sure you use hashtag lego hashtag make it with michaels that way we can really see in the end all of your awesome creations uh because i know we are able to look through most of you guys and see uh see a good portion of the models but i'm willing to bet you we missed a whole bunch of you so uh, just put it out there and, uh, and we'll definitely check them out. Uh, this was a uh, first time doing this for us. So we're, we had a great time. Pete, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with Chris. Uh, I want to, I, I throw out there. Thank you to Michael's for letting us do this and letting us introduce ourselves to you guys and work with you guys through this process. Uh, thank you, Sam, for doing a great job fielding our questions and helping us out, uh, through this process. And thank you to everybody for letting us, you know, have a little bit of your time this afternoon and see what you worked on and maybe inspire what you work on next. And uh, yeah, get out there and build. Like Chris said, if, you're, if your hands aren't in the bricks now, put them in there and make something cool. Absolutely. And uh, what we're gonna be doing is again in a week, right? Yeah, I believe uh, we're gonna be tackling it. Is it Tuesday, Thursday, next week? Uh, the 23rd, the 23rd. Yeah. So if you don't have anything going on, you enjoyed this, uh, come on back and, and, uh, and hang out with us again. Because I think we're going to be doing some more cool stuff then. Yeah. And it'll be our second time. So it'll be smoother. Uh, Chris will have better Well, jokes. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. yeah, thank you guys for coming. Enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, keep building. And uh, hopefully we'll see you back here again next week on the 23rd. Hey, everyone, enjoy the rest of your week.